Let's continue our refactoring and this time refactor our auth controller. I think that this controller is doing too much here and it's generally a good practice to keep controllers as thin as possible. The first thing that stands out to me is this validation part and I want to extract this into its own classes and we'll get to that in a few minutes but before that there is something else that also stands out to me and that is this user registration part. We're creating a new user within the controller which means that we are accessing the entity manager and deciding how we're gonna hash the password and so on also after the user registers we are not redirecting the user and we're not really authenticating the user and we want to authenticate the user as soon as the user signs up instead of returning just a plain response we want to return a response with a location header so that we can redirect the user to the home page with status 302 Next, I want to move this part out of here entirely and let the auth class handle the registration because we already refactored auth related stuff within our auth.php. So let's get rid of this and we can call something like this auth register and pass down the data here. Now let's create this uh, register method within our auth interface and uh, this is going to accept array of data and it's going to return an instance of user interface so let's go to the auth class now and implement that register method let's scroll down and we'll paste in the code that I copied now again I don't want to do this within our auth class because we don't have access to the entity manager we have auth provider injected in our constructor so we want to basically do the registration or the creation of the user within the user provider class so again we're going to take this part and we'll simply do user equals this user provider create user maybe or we can call it register again but i think create user makes more sense we'll pass in the data array or the dto depending on how you're implementing this and once the user is created we want to authenticate the user so let's put a comment here that we want to authenticate the user and then we'll return this user all right so how do we authenticate the user now how do we fill this in if we go to the attempt login method we see that we are authenticating the user using the credentials and then we regenerate the session and put the user id in the session now within our register method we don't really need to check the credentials because the user is simply just registering with their own password and username so we just need to authenticate that user Basically, we only need these three lines right here within the register method to authenticate the user. Now, I could just copy these three lines and paste it within the register method, but I think it's better if we extract this into its own method, which will basically authenticate the given user entity that will pass as an argument. So let's replace these three lines with something like this login and then we'll pass the user as an argument. Now let's create this method and it will be the public method and we'll need to add this uh, method definition to the interface as well. But let's paste in the code first. This method returns nothing so let's add the return type void. Let's now add the method definition to the interface. Let's go back to the auth class and now we can call the same login method within the register method to authenticate the newly created user. All right, so this part is done. Now let's create this create user method within the user provider class. This will return the user interface and we need to add this method to the user provider implementation as well. So let's implement that method there within the user provider service class. Let's paste in the code that we copied before that creates the user entity and we can then return the user entity once it's created. As you can see this looks a lot more cleaner. We have extracted the user creation logic into a user provider service. Now our controller looks uh, a lot better because it does not have to worry about or know about entity manager. We're simply now calling the register method on the auth class which handles the user creation part as well as the authentication right after the user registers. Quick note here that a data variable here is a really good candidate again to be a DTO object instead of an array. 
Same goes to the register method. Instead of accepting an array, we can accept some sort of register data DTO or something like that. And we would have to make the same change to the user provider interface and the implementation and so on. I'm going to create this DTO class and change these uh, parameter types behind the scenes of the recording, but feel free to pause the video and implement the DTO yourself first. You can go back to the DTO lesson if needed and give it a try. All right, and here it is. I've created the register user data DTO within the data objects directory, and it has three properties currently, just the name, email, and password. Now we create this in the auth controller this way and pass it down to the register method on the auth class. The register method accepts register user data as an argument. We updated the auth class as well to accept the register user data and we're just passing that down to the create user on the user provider class. If we inspect the create user, we see that it also accepts the register user data as an argument and we modified the user provider service to access the name, email and password this way instead of accessing them as an array. All right, so let's now test this out to make sure that it works and then we'll move on to the validation part. So let's open the browser and I'm using fake filler browser extension to fill in dummy data in the form fields. Let's hit register. And as you can see, the user has been registered successfully and we were automatically logged in and redirected to the dashboard page. We can then log out and that works as well. All right, so let's go back to the code and let's now think about how we can refactor the validation part. I think that we should extract this validation rules and everything related to the validation into its own classes. We can have a validation class for user registration, which will contain the rules and validation for the registration part. And then we can have a validation class for the user login and so on. So instead of doing all of this, why don't I take this code and remove it from here? And instead we can do something like new register user request validator and we can have a method on it called validate which will accept the request body as an argument or the data. Now let's create this class and I'm going to put this under its own namespace maybe something like uh, request validators or something like that so we can do app request validators and let's add that class and we need to create the validate method so let's add that method in here and this is going to accept an array of data it should also return an array because we are assigning data here to this so we should just return either the validated data or just the same data that we are passing in if all the validation passes now we can paste in the code that we copied from the controller in here and this is going to be responsible for validation we can add the return data in here to just return that data if if everything passed. Now we just need to inject the entity manager in the constructor here. So we'll do something like private read only entity manager, entity manager, and this should be good enough. Now we have a problem here, and the problem is that we are expecting entity manager object as a dependency in the constructor, and we are instantiating this class directly in the controller. So we need to pass the entity manager in here. And I really don't want to pass down the entity manager manually every time I want to create a request validator object. I want something like a container to be responsible for generating a new instance of this request validator class or any request validator class that we'll need later on. Now notice how I said we need something to generate or create an instance of request validator classes. That sounds like a factory pattern is what's needed. We can have something like a validator factory class that will be responsible for creating and resolving the proper request validator objects. Its job is to basically create and resolve a new instance of an object and return it. So instead of newing up the register user request validator class manually here, we could do something like this request validator factory and then call the make method on it, which will accept the class name that we want uh, our factory to create an object of in this case that would be register user request validator and we'll just pass the fully qualified class name and then we can call the validate method on that because we'll assume that this make method will return a proper object 
of register user request validator class. So let's format the code, let's scroll up, let's inject the request validator factory. And in fact, I'm going to replace this entity manager with something like request validator factory interface and call this request validator factory. That way we don't need entity manager in the controller at all. So let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. And now we need to create this interface. So let's add this interface within our contracts namespace. And this is going to have a single method called make, which will accept a fully qualified class name. And this should return an instance of a request validator. Now we can't really be too specific here on which request validator it should return. So instead we'll again use the interfaces. So why don't we do something like return request validator interface and we'll implement this interface within the register user request validator. So let's create this interface within the contracts again. And this is going to have a single method called validate because we're calling this validate method here. So let's add that method in here. This again will be array of data and it's going to return an array. Now let's implement this interface in our register user request validator. So we'll do implement request validator interface and we already have the validate method implemented properly. Great, so I think this is looking really good. Now we just need to bind the request validator factory interface in our container to resolve it and then actually create the request validator factory class that implements this interface. So let's open container bindings and we'll do request validator factory interface and we'll bind this to some sort of concrete implementation. And we'll simply resolve the class from the container. So we'll do container get request validator factory class. Let's format the code. Let's import this. And this is the class that will implement this interface. We need to create that class. Now let's create this class within the request validators namespace. And this is going to implement the request validator factory interface and we need to define the make method here and in this method we have to figure out how to resolve the class properly which has to be an instance of request validator interface so remember the problem that we're trying to solve now is that within our register user request validator i do not want to pass down entity manager manually every time we request an object of this class instead i want this to be automatically uh, resolved by the container we can do that by simply using the container within this factory so we can inject the container instance in here so we can do private read only container interface container and here we can create a validator variable and simply do this container get class now we need to make sure that the validator class that got resolved from the container is actually an instance of a request validator interface so we can do some check here if validator is instance of request validator interface then we can simply return the validator otherwise we can maybe throw a new runtime exception stating that we failed to instantiate the request validator class and maybe include the class that we are trying to instantiate this way we could also create a custom exception for this, but for now, we'll just keep it as a runtime exception. In fact, why don't you create a custom exception class here and use that instead to practice. Now let's also refactor the login part because we're also doing the validation here, even though it's just few lines. Seems like we forgot to call the validate method here on the validator object and then throw the exception. So this technically is useless because it doesn't really do any validation. We didn't actually call the validate method and throw the exception if the validate method returned false. That's fine though, because we are refactoring this anyways. So I'm going to copy this and instead we'll do something like this we'll do this request validator factory make user login request validator and we'll call validate on it and pass the body to it now let's create this validator class within the request validators namespace we need to implement the request validator interface let's add the validate method and we'll paste in the code in here 
Now we also need to add the validate method which was missed in the controller. So we'll do if not v validate then throw new validation exception and pass the errors as an argument. And finally we'll return the data. All right, so I think uh, this is pretty good. As you can see, it was very simple to create a new validator class. Our controllers now are much thinner and easier to maintain and manage. And we've made use of interfaces more and learned a little bit more about the factory design pattern. As I've mentioned many times before, there are many different ways of implementing things, including the way we implemented the request validator factory and the way we refactored everything in here. For example, Laravel provides custom request classes functionality where you can inject custom request class in a controller method methods instead of the regular request class and then you would define the validation rules within that custom request class. Then Laravel takes care of the actual validation and throwing the exception and so on. We could build something similar to that but I don't want to overcomplicate this project and therefore we're going to stick with whatever we built right now. I think this is good enough. So let's test this out now to make sure that everything is working including the registration and login functionality. So let's open the browser. I'm going to first try to log in using the wrong credentials. We hit login and sure enough that works we were redirected back to the login page with the email being pre-filled and the proper error message. Now let's make sure that the sign up works as expected. Let's hit register and sure enough that works as expected. Now let's test the validation part of the registration. So let's fill in some data. This email should already exist. The passwords should not match. So if I hit register, we see that we get the proper error messages that the user with the given email address already exists and the confirmed passwords did not match. All right, so I think we're done refactoring for now. There's one more thing that we could have made better, I think, and that is within the request validator itself. We are still accessing this entity manager within the request validator. And we could improve this by maybe extracting this into a custom rule class that would be responsible for checking and validating that specific rule. And then it would be okay to have entity manager in there. But this is also perfectly fine. We've already extracted all the validation rules within this one single request validator class. So it's okay to access Entity Manager in here. So in the next lesson, I think we're going to move on with our authentication and touch some other topics. I know that we still have to implement the forgot password and email verification functionalities, but we'll do that a bit later. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoy my videos, please hit the like button. It really helps the channel grow a lot faster. And subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so. Thanks again, and I'll see you in the next one.